good afternoon, everybody. Hope everyone's doing well. It is Wednesday at 1 p.m. and uh, we're going to be doing a live card demo today. I've got a fun fold for you today. And if you're joining, please drop me a comment. Hi, Akiko. Thanks for joining. I can see your comment. We'll see if I see other people's comments today. Um, before we get started, um, I just wanted to take a minute to, to say let's remember uh, today in our prayers all of the folks in Florida. Hi, Faith. Thanks for joining. Um, as Hurricane Ian is making landfall now on the west coast of Florida, and this looks to be a pretty bad hurricane, unfortunately. Um, there's going to be lots of storm surge. Um, so, you know, if you would, please just keep them in your prayers today. Um, we actually have a team member down in Florida in Fort Myers right now. So, uh, you know, hopefully everybody remains safe and, um, and uh, they, they can uh, keep, keep above that storm surge. Okay, so today um, I have a fun fold card. It is a flip flap card. And uh, it basically consists of, uh, hey Rosie, thanks for joining. It consists of two card bases. Uh, so this, this card base in the back here, um, which is kind of chopped off in the front, and then the smaller card base in the center um, and hence the, the, the name flip flap. Um, and that's kind of fun to say flip flap. Um, but I use the, um, uh, hello harvest stamp set and the, uh, rustic pumpkin dies. These come bundled together in the mini catalog, the current mini catalog. Uh, I also use the rustic harvest designer series paper as well as the Gingham Cottage Designer Series paper. Hey Mary, thanks for joining. Thank you. Um, yeah, the flip flap is a fun fold, um, and, and I like fun folds. Uh, they're, yeah, they're a lot of fun. Ah, crack myself up. Okay, so I wanted to just kind of, you know, this, this is the card base, and all of these measurements, um, you know, I always get ahead of myself. My apologies. My name is Carol Buckaloo, Inky B Stampers. I am an independent Stampin' Up demonstrator. I always forget that part. I need to put a big sign up or something uh, before I get started. Um, but the, this particular fun fold, as I mentioned, has two card bases. All of the dimensions, uh, you know, will be included, are included on my blog today. Um, and you can download a PDF tutorial um, to, to get all the instructions, but I just wanted to show you. So the larger card base is 11 by four and a quarter, and this card base needs to be scored at five and a half. Uh, so if I go ahead and just put my card in here, this surface on the trimmer is really slick, which is nice. Um, but my card stock always moves on me. There we go. So make sure you're using your scoring blade, not your cutting blade. And I'm going to go ahead and score that. Uh, so five and a half is half of 11. And then I'm going to turn this card around and I am going to trim off two and three quarter inches uh, from this card base. So two and three quarters, on the cutting blade. And we can discard this little piece for something else in the future. So this is now our card front. And then on the, what I'm calling card base number two, that is 10 inches by three and a half inches. We are going to score this one at five inches right down the middle. There we go. And hopefully I got those scored somewhat even. Get rid of this trimmer. And I'm going to get my bone folder and make sure these are even. Give this a nice crease. And I'm going to do the same with the smaller card base. This one I got a little bit off. Take 
we can get it to. There we go. Okay. So those are our two card bases. And with the flip flap card, so right now, both of my spines are on the left. For this smaller base, I'm going to turn it around. And it is going to get adhered to the inside of the larger base. Uh, then we, we close the small flap and then this flap. Right now I know it's hard to see because it's all one color cardstock, uh, but when we get the DSP on, we'll be able to see that better. I'm gonna set these aside and right now, I think what I'd like to do is get some stamping out of the way. And this card is, is really decorated up. You're gonna cut, you know, a, a, a small piece of the Gingham Cottage DSP, and this is in pumpkin pie. Uh, so we've got all our fall colors here, and then we've got two pieces that are the same size at four and seven eighths by three and three eighths. I'm going to need one of those for stamping, and then we've got two of the Rustic Harvest DSP, um, a small one and a larger one. So uh, set these aside for now, and let me get these little notes out of the way. And then we've got an inside panel, uh, four and seven eighths and three and three eighths again. And we are going to do a little bit of stamping. So on my sample card, I stamped directly onto the DSP, uh, the greeting hello. And then I second generation stamped um, the leaf. And then behind our pumpkin here, I stamped two leaves as well, uh, directly onto the DSP. So we'll attempt to do that and see how we do. So I am using Early Espresso Ink. And because these are red rubber stamps, um, I'm gonna go ahead and just test stamp this off first to make sure It is fairly straight, fingers crossed here, and um, I'm gonna come up about an inch, and I'm gonna kind of use um, the grid on this paper to help me. And I, I can live with that. And then we're gonna take our leaf stamp. Um, I am going to ink that stamp up, make sure we have it nicely covered. I'm going to stamp off onto my scrap paper, and then I'm going to stamp over that hello, just like that. Okay, and then we are going to stamp two more leaves, full strength here, no stamping off, and I'm going to stamp one, let me see here, I'm going to stamp one about here and ink that up again and just kind of angle it out and stamp one more time and it's just kind of to give some interest behind our pumpkin all right very good I can see that I could have stamped the hello a little bit further over Hopefully it looks okay when we get the pumpkin on. I was I was so worried about you know getting it even that I wasn't watching my border here, um, but if if it looks goofy we can we can maybe fix it. All right, and then I have an inside panel here um, in very vanilla cardstock, and I am going to um, let me just reference my sample card to see what I did here. Um, we have the additional greeting, uh, you are such a blessing. And I think this card would make a nice, um, I think this card would make a nice Thanksgiving card, you know, as well. Friendship card, Thanksgiving card. And because we've got red rubber again, I'm going to just test stamp on my grid paper here to this side. And fingers crossed we get that straight. Okay, I'll take it. And then I'm going to come back with our leaf and ink that up. 
and I am going to stamp full strength, one leaf there in the lower right corner, and then I'm going to immediately stamp off to the right of that. And I love this early espresso ink when you second generation stamp, it looks like mocha, it's so pretty. So I just inked it up again and stamped off again, and I'm gonna second generation stamp one more time to the left of that first image we stamped. And that is our um, inside panel. Set that aside. And while I've got this ink out, I'm gonna go ahead and stamp the front of my envelope, also very vanilla. And I'm gonna do the same thing, full string, stamp in the corner, and then immediately stamp off to the right, second generation. And then I'm gonna ink it one more time and stamp off and then come back and stamp one more time. And that is the front of our envelope and I can put this ink away. Oh, no I can't. Need the ink, hold on. Let me get these stamps out of the way so I don't stick my arm in ink. Uh, I have a blending brush and I have gone ahead and pre-die cut using the, the rustic pumpkin dies. I have die cut a larger embossed um, pumpkin and then the tall skinny pumpkin. Now these pumpkins can be put together to make one pumpkin as well. They look really nice that way. Um, but I chose this time to kind of use them uh, separately. And I don't know if you can see it or not, but these pumpkins have, uh, when you die cut them, they also get embossed at the same time. Um, and they're really pretty. And so just, um, just because, um, it's kind of a rustic card. I thought I would blend a little bit of the um, early espresso ink and I'm dipping my blending brush in the ink pad and then kind of stamping it off. And I wanna kind of concentrate that ink um, on the embossed areas. And uh, just give it a bit of a, a shading, if you will. There we go, and that's that one. But it just kind of sets that embossing off nicely. And then I'll do our tall skinny one here. And I'm just using a very light touch with this blending brush. It doesn't, doesn't take much to transfer that ink. Uh, and the blending brushes do such a nice job. They really do. I'm, I'm trying to get that embossing to stand out a bit. And I think that's good. Now I can put the ink away. There we go. If you're looking for a spot on my desk, it's not cluttered. Um, and then I went ahead and I pre-cut um, two of the pumpkin stems. I've got them upside down here in Mossy Meadow. And I've also cut two of the vines also in Mossy Meadow. And I'm gonna go ahead and put these pumpkins together get my tweezers. Um, these vines are also um, are also embossed when you when you uh, die cut them which is really nice and then this one on the skinny pumpkin you've got to get it down for far enough so that that little that little tab that you use to glue it on with doesn't show on the outside so I think that's good and let's get the second one adhere to our larger pumpkin and a little bit of glue and I just put that glue on the wrong side yes I did that's all right I'm gonna wipe it off here now I'll have sticky fingers let's put it on the correct side there we go uh, but what I was gonna say was that you know this glue a little bit goes a long way um, yeah now my fingers are sticking Oh, well, challenges with using glue. And then I'm gonna go ahead and uh, try to just get a few small drops of glue here on our vines. And I'm just going to position it there. I didn't glue the end. Um, I like oftentimes to just kind of, um, you know, give a little dimension to elements like this uh, and, and kind of curly ends up a little bit. And we'll glue our second one on. 
and I think that's more than enough. And I'm just, there we go. I'm just putting the end of that vine, you know, where it will meet the, um, the pumpkin stem, a little less noticeable that way. Okay, we're gonna set these aside for a minute and bring in our large card base. we are going to use the largest panel from the Rustic Harvest DSP and go ahead and adhere our, uh, adhere this to the inside of the large card base. Curly cues, I know they're cute, aren't they, Rosie? <laughs> Occupational hazard, absolutely, Mary. And I'm just making sure that I have an equal reveal here when I'm putting this DSP on the inside. And then on the opposite panel, uh, or the back of the front of the card, if that makes sense, um, I'm going to use a piece of the gingham cottage, a pumpkin pie gingham print to put on that opposite panel. And I think the fun thing about these cards is that uh, you really get to decorate them up. You know, you get a lot of, a lot more panels here, um, which is, is always fun. And I'm just, let me scooch that up, make sure it's even. And that looks pretty good, okay. And then our smaller card base. So on the large panel, the spine is to the left. On our small, small card base, remember to keep the panel to the right. And I am going to, let me see here. So we need a, I'm confusing myself, good grief here. I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm short of panel, and it's right here. So I'm going to put actually the front of our card on this small card base. I confused myself and I made the card. That's too funny. All right, and let's make sure we put it on the right way. So the spine is on the right. And make sure we have a Nice reveal all the way around. That looks good. And I'm going to open that card panel up. And so this is the front panel. On the back of that front panel, we're going to put another piece of DSP, uh, the Gingham Cottage. So this card really comes together quickly. Um, doesn't use too, too many supplies. It certainly doesn't use a lot of different colored papers or inks. Sometimes I get carried away. Uh, using all the different colors, you just can't help it. They're so pretty. And it looks like we had a pretty even reveal around that. And let me see here. I feel like I'm missing something here. Oh, yep. Yeah. So on the front of our larger card base, we have a piece of the Rustic Harvest DSP to go on the front there. And my PDF tutorial has pictures. <laughs> so you can see what goes where, because obviously I'm confused today. <laughs> Too funny. And we are gonna put that And I just am checking to make sure that my edges are kind of even. Makes the card look a whole lot nicer. And there we go. Okay. So now we can adhere uh, our small panel uh, inside of the larger panel. So we're going to open up the flap of the large panel. I'm going to go ahead and get some glue here on the back of the smaller card base. I'm saying panel, I meant card base. 
And again, spine is on the right. I'm going to go ahead and drop this into the open section of the card. And I want to make sure that I just have it even top to bottom and left to right. And bear with me here. I just need to hold that up and make sure I got it even. I think I did. Before I give it a good press, that looks good. And then I'm going to open up the small card base panel and we'll go ahead and put our inside sentiment on the inside of the card. I was going to use stamp and seal for my inside greeting because sometimes the glue, you know, kind of shows. And my stamp and seal is all messed up. It won't work. I don't know how to fix it. So I guess I'm going to have to get a new one. I'm not sure what I did exactly. But sometimes when that glue is wet, if you really give it a nice rub, you won't get those kind of glue lines. Um, so hopefully that's that. So how this card would work is you would fold in the left panel first and then the right panel. Um, so now we can go ahead and uh, start decorating our card. Um, I'm going to open up that right panel and leave the left panel closed. Uh, and on the left panel over here, I um, have cut... I've cut one of the leaves from the rustic pumpkin dies and four of um, the leaves uh, in the rustic harvest DSP and they, they kind of make pretty leaves so I just thought that was kind of a nice touch. And I'm going to go ahead and glue our, our little soul uh, gingham cottage leaf here. I'm going to glue this uh, I've left it uncovered so it's all goopy. And I'm just going to kind of put it at a little angle at the center of this panel here. Like that. And then we can open this panel up and then I'm going to put three leaves uh, on this right panel. And let me use my uh, tweezers so much better and then I don't get sticky glue on me and I just kind of whoops randomly stuck these down just kind of like they're falling which leaves do our red bud uh, we have a red bud out front and a red bud tree out back and the leaves are starting to turn yellow. Uh, they'll get a bright yellow. They're it's really pretty. I always like this time of year for all the color. And then I'll add my third leaf. And let's turn him this way. There we go. There we go. And then on the left panel, I am going to glue up um, the tall skinny pumpkin and we'll put them right in the center of the panel there. And just get some glue on this. And then I'm going to take our uh, fourth leaf cut from the Rustic Harvest DSP and I'm going to go ahead and put that over top of the pumpkin that I just adhered to the inside flap there. Kind of at an angle there. There we go. And then the way our card closes is the left flap closes first, followed by the right flap, and all we need to do, yeah, uh, Kiko, I thought the little skinny pumpkin was perfect for that as well. 
um, I'm going to go ahead and um, adhere this larger pumpkin using Stampin' Dimensionals. So let me go ahead and get some dimensionals onto our pumpkin. And you can see, this is like kind of a quick card. Once you have the die cuts done, um, the card comes together very quickly. Now let's put one more there in the center. Okay. Uh, so today is the last day of Stampin' Up's weekly specials. Um, there are some discounted items. You can check those out on my blog at inkybstampers.com or go directly to the Stampin' Up website. And um, Perfect Partners ends on Friday. And that's where Stampin' Up you know, came out with six dies that coordinate with uh, items from the annual and mini catalog, stamp sets rather. Um, and let me just, see I need to be quiet so I can focus here. To put my pumpkin on, let me make sure he's straight before I push him down. He's straight, and we'll push him down. So, uh, weekly specials end today. So if, if you're looking to get one of the items that is on a weekly special, uh, this week, you'll need to, to take care of that today uh, and place your order. Uh, and then on Friday, the Perfect Partners where Stampin' Up! has come out with six dies that coordinate with existing stamp sets. Um, and if you don't own the stamp set, you can get the stamps and dies for a bundled price. Um, otherwise, you know, you can just order the dies to coordinate with the stamp set if, you, if you've already purchased it. So... Um, really love that. And then this Saturday is World Card Making Day. And Stampin' Up! Uh, has an event. And it will be um, 4 to 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Bear with me. See, I can't do two things at once. I have to focus. <laughs> Make sure I've got that on straight. Um, so Stampin' Up's a virtual event. It's free, 4 to 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, and they will be doing three presentations, pre presenting three different um, product bundles. And uh, my team, the Ink and Crew, will be having live presentations beginning at 9 a.m. on Saturday and running through 9 p.m. Eastern Time, uh, Saturday night. Did I say Sunday? Saturday, October 1st. Um, and you can join the, um, the Ink and Crew group for World Card Making Day. We'll be having some giveaways. We will be sharing uh, card projects with you um, where you, you know, you'll be able to grab the information to recreate the cards if you'd like. And then we'll have live presentations once every hour uh, on Saturday. So it's going to be a really fun event, um, you know, and, and it's free and everyone is welcome. So, you know, if you've got friends that craft or family members that craft, please share the information with them. Um, and I forget the Facebook link, but if you go to inkybstampers.com, you will uh, find the link to join that Facebook group uh, for Saturday's event for the Ink and Crew. And um, it, it, I promise it's going to be a lot of fun. But, you know, please help us get the word out and share that information. That would be fantastic. Um, and let me just get around this corner here. See, I need to focus again. Too funny. All right. So that is our finished card for today. And that came together really quickly. Um, but I still took a half an hour. Uh, but anyway, yeah, our finished card, a flip flap uh, card. And I, I love all the decoration. I love the papers together. Uh, just a nice, nice fall card. But again, this would be great for a fall birthday, for a Thanksgiving card, a friendship card, um, you know, thinking of you, whatever. Um, but, you know, those papers just make it so incredibly pretty. So that is it for today. Please remember to join us um, for, um, for Saturday's World Card Making Day event, uh, and I hope to see you then. I'll be presenting at 1 p.m., 
and my other team members are presenting all day long, so uh, it, it's going to be a fun time. Uh, thanks, everybody, for joining. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, Y'all have a wonderful day, and take care. Bye-bye.